Good morning and welcome to another CAN Diagnostic video. In today's riveting episode, we have a Volkswagen Crafter um, that at the minute in these this lockdown state is a no crank, no start. Um, so we're here today to sort this out as it's a, for a charity um, and this charity is currently using this vehicle to transport medical equipment around the local area. So we've come in specially under the lockdown circumstances to get this get this back on the road. Um, so we'll have a look at why this is not cranking. Right, onto the scanner. Okay. Let's go straight to engine. No comms. Hmm. All right, give me one sec. We'll have a look what's going on. Okay, so he's not connecting. We've got no communication. It's connecting to the module. Um, I've just tried another scanner on it, and it just tried the auto. It's exactly the same. Um, powers up the module, but won't actually connect to the car at all. So what I'm going to do? Um, I've already checked the battery. That's Nothing really to look at there, it's quite boring. Um, I think with no crank, I think I'm going to test 5 volt reference just quickly. Um, if that's bad, we'll go fuses. Um, if it's good, probably still go fuses to be honest with you. Don't know why it really takes so long to check the basics, but right, we've got the meter rift. Just go through these so we can get it all in. Pin one, nothing. Pin two, nothing. And pin three, very little. Right, pin four, nothing. Right, so we've got no five volt reference. Uh, that'd be why she went crank. Okay, it's not important to know off the top of your head which what every one of these wires does. Um, not at the minute. We know at least one will be earth. At least one will be a signal wire. And it's probably got a temperature sensor in here as well. So one would be signal for temperature. One would be signal for the math. Uh, but with no five volt, the math can't power up. So you imagine what else can't power up. The ECU sent shares 5 volt reference with an awful lot of sensors on here. I don't know whether it's got a split circuit, whether it's got two 5 volt reference circuits or just the one that supplies the whole vehicle. Either way, it's not there. So, onto the fuse board. Right, not what I've found. This one, that one. You see that? Fucked. See, we still got a flashy light. All right, let's put the new one in. Oh, did you hear that? That sounded good. Right. Do, 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 do. Oh. Well, she cranks, so I'll get this battery on charge and then we'll see what happens. And she lives. We have got an engine warning light flashing. It's never as simple as just change the bleeding fuse. The fuse has popped, there's a reason for it to pop. Um, but we need to get on with this and see what's going on so this can go back out to the old folks. All right, go and have a look at the scanner. So, the three codes, 
that is. Three codes. Boost pressure regulation control range not reached. Manifold barometric pressure sensor malfunction. Upper limit reached. Manifold barometric pressure sensor. Signal too low. Lower limit. So upper limit reached and lower limit intermediate. Right. Let's go. have a look what the air is doing inside the vehicle coming in requested air mass actual air mass intake temperature atmospheric pressure turbo pressure requested boost Just. Mm. so requested at idle is 300 the actual air masses are at 100 Turbo pressure and requested turbo, that's pretty on point. Let's uh, Oops. Let's give it a rev and see if that actual air mass moves. No, you can see requested. And we're looking at actual. So this is what the ECU wants. This is what's actually happening. Let's put it on graph. A bit, a bit easier. So this will go up, and this should also follow it. But at the minute we're already 200 down. Nothing. Okay. Right. So I think what I'm going to do, um, so the 5 volt reference was down, change the fuse, it's back up, um, so it's either going to be, I should imagine off the top of my head, if I was a guessing man, which I'm not, which is what we're going to test, I'll be looking at air mass flow sensor, mass air flow sensor, um, we'll unplug it, we'll check the Check the voltage at the pins, plug it back in, check the voltage again, things like that. See if this sensor is bringing it down. So, let's go and get set up. Uh, I was going to get the scope out, but we're trying to do this with as little tools as possible. So, even though this is an expensive multimeter, it doesn't need to be. You can do this with a Poundland one. We're going to go through the few, we're going to go through these pins here. We're looking for five volts. So we've got the main feed, 13 volts or battery voltage. Gone to the next pin along, pin two. That there's nothing there, so that could be earth. Pin three, that's a signal obviously. Pin four, signal. Mm, pin four's gone. Oh, let's unplug it. Right, I've got them unplugged and we're getting somewhere now. It's going to be difficult to show you. Right, we've got it unplugged. I'll show you the multimeter starting off at pin one. Obviously, extremely small probe, just touching and whacking it in there and spreading terminals. So we've got our main, should be our earth, pin two, which it is. We've got a five, well, that'll be coming from the ECU. It would be like a wire integrity because it's unplugged. There is no signal. And then we go to this other wire. I'm just going to leave that plugged in. And I'm going to wiggle the wires. Can you see that? It's me shaking the wire and loom. So, good news is, looks like the math sensor's good. Bad news is, looks like we've got a wiring fault. Um, wiring faults can be tricky, can be easy. It's all a look of the draw. Uh, if we had no signal at that one wire at all, we'll be going to the ECU, which isn't that bad. 
to get to really compared to some of them and I'd be checking the same pin down here and see if we've got voltage if we had voltage here but nothing at the sensor then we know we've got a we've got a break but as soon as I, I can manipulate that voltage by shaking the wire I'm gonna say we've got a broken wire in here so let's just always start Give all them a tug. It's any of them. Uh, this could be a long process. Oh, oh not a long process. Bloody hell, that was lucky. Right. Let's turn that stupid thing off. Can you see that? We've been having some rubbing. We all like a bit of rubbing. Now, if you can see that very well, it's corroded through. It's been rubbed through. Corrosion's got in there. And it's going to be tricky to solder. That is. I might have to put a connector in there or something. But we'll have a look. That's good. Now I'm going to strip that wiring back. This. Uh, This tape that they put on here, and strip that back because where there's one, there's usually more than one. So I don't like putting wires in, I like finding the fault because where there's usually one wire, there's usually a second about to go. So I'll put the camera down and I'm getting there and have a look. So, what I've done is I've used one of these um, connectors with solder in the middle of them. These things, and obviously a lot smaller. So you just push the wire in, push both ends of the wire in, twist it up, twist the wires together, and with that, with the core, it's got um, it's like a, a low melt solder in there, soldered together nice and quick, nice and easy. And then the coloured bits at the end, uh, the sealant seals it in. But what I'm going to do anyway is because some of the wires have got slight nicks in them they haven't gone all the way through not it's just basically punctured the insulation but i'm going to paint it all up with um chemical tape liquid tape um and i'll put it all back together and we'll see how we get on from there okay there so we're all back together Good repair, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie that out of the way so it can't rub on anything. Just going to go back through these pins. Main. And we've got the earth. Then pin three. Signal. Another signal, look. Put the probe in properly. If waggling the wires, all steady, all stable. So let's go back to the the scanner. And that's it. No codes. No flashing lights. So what's got on then? It looks like that wire is shorted against one of the wires next to it and has brought down the 5 volt reference popping that fuse stopping it from starting didn't take that long really um, all things considered um, again it just goes to prove that sometimes there's no need to get I could, you know, I could have whacked the Pico out could have got right technical wiring diagrams all over the place get me coloured pens out and start drawing lines all over the bleeding paper and doing fucking equations and all that sort of shit there's no need didn't need to know any of those pins really it's not hard to work out there's only five of them there you can work out what they all do so it takes a lot less time and especially when this needs to go back on the road for the old, old old folks get them to their doctor's appointments and coronavirus checks and all that shit so another good job done until next time ta-da